Welcome, everyone. It's still a good morning here for me. This is Austin. It is Flashpoint Friday. Your turnaround story starts here, but today your turnaround might be involved with getting a new job. I am here with Joseph Stetter. You can see the little uh, moniker there, land your dream job. Joseph, I am so glad that you took the time to come on here today and talk about something that is extremely timely. Uh, thank you, first of all, for having me, Austin. It is an honor and a pleasure. And yeah, I've dedicated my life to helping people kind of get over the hump of navigating how to get that job, especially now with all the craziness that's going on. Yeah, absolutely. And I've just coined you the dream job master because it seems like that's your focus. And I, and I love that because a lot of people settle for jobs that are not good for them. And we're going to get into this, by the way, we're going to talk about all this. And before we do, I just coined you the dream job master, but let's talk about your history because I want people to know that you are the real deal in this space. You have over 20 years invested in this space. It's funny how a lot of times when you end up doing like something that you're passionate about and you're good at, it's like you've made all the mistakes, right? So it sounds like you, you've had 18 different jobs, nine different careers. Like you've you've shifted gears so many times, but you have literally 20 years in, in the recruitment space. Is that right? Yeah, and I've invested 25,000 hours. So I, I kind of joke that I didn't know what I want to do when I grow up. You know, so I started working to kind of get a job that would please my parents and then realized I hate this. I became physically ill, mentally ill, emotionally ill. And I was like, okay, this is not for me. And so I kept looking and looking for what it is that my calling is. And yeah, uh, in the process of switching careers, I became a recruiter. I've worked with some of the largest companies in the world, such as IBM, uh, Deloitte and Touche, uh, Apotex Pharmaceuticals. Uh, I've been a generalist in recruiting. And along the way, I kind of realized, you know what? No one is teaching people how to actually get the job. Like you could be lucky and eventually get it, but I don't want people to spend six months to a year getting the job. I want them to get it in, let's say, a month. And I want them to know the tricks and the systems to get there. And that's kind of what I'm committed to. I love that. And the other thing I, I want to mention that you, you've written six books on it. Yes. So you have six books that you've dedicated yourself to write the books. So on it. this is one. There's a Canadian version and an American version of Congratulations, You're Hard. It was easier than you thought. Uh, and then uh, I've contributed to other collaborations where I kind of talk about Here's yeah. how to learn who you are and here's what to do to to kind of get to that next level. Now, is it I, I read this number because you and I obviously we prepared for this. Yeah. Is it true you've helped 11,000 people in this over 20 years? You, you've helped 11,000 people. Is that is this? Over, right? Yeah, over 11,000 people. I have a 90 percent success rate of finding anybody employment in any field, in any industry in under three months. Most of them get hired in about a month and a half. The fastest I found people jobs is two days. Um, and uh, wow. a lot of the people I've helped are people that are new immigrants that don't have the official like US or Canadian experience, uh, people that have had criminal records, people that kind of said, you know what, similar to me, I hate being an accountant, let's say, I want another career. And I've helped them kind of rewrite the resume, rebrand themselves in a, in a matter of speaking and get hired in whatever direction they wanted. What, that's incredible. What, I guess this two day thing, like <laughs> how did you get somebody, uh, and was that like a, a dream job for them or was that just like a better position? Like talk about that. Cause I, I mean, we, we're gonna look at all of it, but but that's an incredible time frame. two days. So if I, if I can share a couple, stories and how this kind of happened so the yes. first story is actually my current wife um, she was she works with autistic children and she failed her review by 1% she got 96% and she needed 97% and the school that she was at was like we're not renewing your contract because you failed the evaluation so she kind of cried for a couple days then um, I was like, you realize that at the time we were still dating, you're dating one of the top career coaches in North America. So I wrote her resume on Sunday afternoon. She sent out seven resumes. Monday morning, three companies called her, asked her to come in for an interview on Tuesday, and all three companies offered her a job on Tuesday, basically. 
right? And she loves working with autistic kids. Uh, a second example I had, and uh, this is kind of early on when I started helping people in this realm. Uh, I'm an avid salsa dancer. I've been dancing and performing and competing for about 15 years. And when I first started dancing, my dance you? partner, thank you, uh, my dance partner called me out of the blue and was like, hey, there's this unpaid internship for a large telecom company in Canada. I really, 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 really want it. And I kind of make fun of her a little bit. I'm like, you really, really want it? She's like, yeah, I'll do anything. I'm like, okay, I'm like your Mr. Miyagi from The Karate Kid. Whatever I tell you to do, you have to do it. You can't ask any questions. I said, right. you're applying for a position that's called graphic design. You're not allowed to have a cookie cutter black and white resume. So we made her resume green. We then, like she had a little like dancing signature guy that she would use for all her um, kind of work that she did in digital media. We made that her bullet points in her resume. She was a barista at, uh, oh. at a coffee shop, right? So I kind of wrote how her doing lattes and drawing on the lattes actually graphic design. So sent the resume in, two weeks go by. She calls me, they're like, oh, they didn't even call me, you suck. An hour <laughs> later, they called her, right? <laughs> the director says to her, listen, I'm so sorry it's taken me so long to reach to you. We received 7,400 applications for 20 unpaid internship. Your resume was one of our favorites. Now, because we wow. received so many applications, this is going to be a three interview process. And um, your first interview is going to be in two days. So she calls me back. She's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. They called me. What do I do? What do I do? I'm like, first of all, <laughs> apologize to me. Right. <laughs> and then here's what I want you to do. So I want to, let's say, to go uh, to Kinko's or Grand and Tour or Staples yeah, yeah. and, and print out your best 10 works on the highest quality, like glossy paper, even if it costs you $40. Then I want you to organize all your folders somewhere at the time, Flickr was a very popular social media for kind of graphic design so that yes. it's easily accessible and the employer can see it. I taught her my seven rules to a perfect interview and we kind of role played a little is bit. That in, is that in your course? Is that in the course? That is in offering? my course. Yeah, that is in my course. And uh, once uh, there, she came in two days later, 15 minutes into the interview, the director literally yeah. put down his pen, looked at her and said, listen, I've been running this program for over 10 years. I have never been so impressed with the candidate as I am with you. I'm not even wow. bothering with the second and third interview. You are my first intern. That's awesome. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that, you know what? I love that. Cause I used to, I used to do, I was a part of the hiring process and it, it, when somebody stands out like that and teaching somebody how to stand out is, is extremely valuable. But I'll tell you, one of the things that I, I wanted to hit on with this, especially now, Joseph, is that a lot of people are almost in that needy kind of mentality where I'll just take anything, you know, Oh, you know, like, please hire me. Like, you know, and how do you, how do you tr like go after your dream job when you're, you're just trying to get a job in this market when it's so competitive and there's layoffs and we've been through this lineage of businesses closing down. Like how do you kind of cut through all that and really ensure that someone can still get their dream job in this market? Well, again, this is where I think, we've lost the art of common sense. And I'm going to say it that way because um, going back to Napoleon Hill in his book, Think and Grow Rich, when you do the little bit extra, when you take action and you make yourself different than everybody else, you will get noticed. So it starts with your resume. I hate cookie cutter resumes. The only time a cookie cutter resume should be used is if you're applying in government or government related work right? Like teaching because they're very structured. They need to kind of see everything. See but if, well. but let's say, um, Austin, because I know a little bit about your background, you've been in sales. If you write to me that you know how to do B2B sales uh, and B2C sales, for example, then, okay, what does that mean? I don't know what you've sold. I don't know how good you are as a salesman. But mm -hmm. if I say to you, like as a salesman, and this is a true story, I worked for a private college that, um, before I came in, did $540,000 for the entire year. I generated $860,000 in one month for them. 
Mm -hmm. right? Now, if I give you those kind of numbers, what is your reaction going to be about my ability to sell? That's tangible. It's right. There's a result that I, you know, that I'm thinking if that result happened over there, it can, it can happen here with my business. And you are probably thinking, how did that result happen? Because well, happen? That, that? that is a huge jump. Absolutely. Now, this is a mistake Absolutely. that most people, like I call it like the five cardinal sins of a resume. The first right, card. Hold on. So, so right, to, if you're if you're here, jo Joseph's giving away some inside information. Five yeah. cardinal sins, sins of, a, of, of a, resume. a resume, and to avoid them, basically. So the first and the biggest one is that the majority of the population uses the exact same font: Times New Roman, Arial, or uh. Calibri, because those are the first three most popular fonts on Microsoft Word. Yes. Right. The yes. second mistake is using the black circles or dots, the or squares, the, the arrows, or the uh, hyphens as your bullet. Again, you look like everybody else. You're kind of stuck in the sea of sameness. Like if you ever watch the movie Legally Blonde, when Elle Woods applies to Harvard, she sends a pink scented resume and then for the internship. And everyone goes, oh my God, it's pink and it's scented. But they remember it, right? It stood out. So you need to add a little bit of kind of personality to your resume. So change the font, change the bullet, you know, use a bullet that relates to your industry, for example, right? Yeah. The next section that most people spend time on, and it's again, complete fluff in my opinion, is that they write, you know what? I have 20 years of experience. I know how to do this. I'm hardworking, I'm dedicated and committed and team player. In 20 years of recruiting, I've met very few people that say, listen, I'm lazy, I'll show up late, none of my work will be any good, and I really hate people, please hire me. <laughs> not unless, not unless right. you're them or sleeping with them that you can kind of get away with that. Right. right, right. Now here's something that you need to understand, Austin, like if I use the word hardworking, your definition of hardworking and my definition of hardworking could be very different. Yes. They're very subjective. Yes. So what's the point of writing those words? Because I've never once looked for a resume that had those words on, yeah. on a resume, right? So don't bother with that section at all, right? The fourth cardinal sin is that most people have like a chronological or functional resume. Now, as you mentioned earlier, given right now COVID and the desperate times that are happening, a lot yeah. of people are just taking any job. But if you post the exactly. any job, if you post the any job first, that's what the company see. Most employers today spend between eight and a maximum of 30 seconds reading your resume, which means, they read the, okay. which means they read the top third to the top half of the first page of your resume. If in the first page of the resume, it says you're working in a coffee shop, but you're wanting to be an engineer, they're not going to take you seriously as an engineer. Yeah, and I, and I, I, I want to jump in for a second here because we got some people joining. So I'm sitting here with, with Joseph sitting here. We're virtually sitting here. With Joseph Center, and he's he's helped eleven thousand people find their their ideal job. He's he's got six books written, and we're talking about this right now because it's really important to talk about this. And I know we're talking about resumes, but I also want to. And, and right now we're going through the five cardinal sins of your resume. But one of the things I want to hit on too, while we're doing this, and and I know I'm sure all of this is in your course, which we're going to talk about at the end. So you want to hear. What the, how this could help you right now in this market. But what about the online? Now everything's automated and I'm submitting these online portals and I can't get a hold of anybody. And so I, as you're talking through the resume, I, I'd love if, if it's appropriate to maybe hit that as well. And so let me finish a little bit about the resume and then I'm going to hit the databases because there's very specific tricks to beat the databases. Got it. Right. So Again, uh, don't put the information, like you can do what's called a semi-functional where you put the relevant information first, not in order so that the companies actually see how good you are. And the biggest mistake of them all, the biggest sin of all, and I addressed this a little bit earlier, is that people say, I know how to do this. I've done this. I don't care that you know how to do it. I want to know how good you are at it, right? So Austin, you, you help people uh, that want to be entrepreneurs, for example. I can measure how good of a coach you are by the results that you've produced for other people. If Absolutely. you don't give me any results, unless I know people that have worked with you, I don't know who you are. 
And right. it's the same thing on the resume. Just because you know, like, for example, have you ever met an accountant, a CPA that does not know how to make financial statements? No. Right. So I don't care that you know how to make financial statements. I want to know how good you are at it. How have you made money, saved money, or increased efficiency? Right? Those are the things that nobody talks about or we've forgotten. And they assume that, well, once I have the interview, I'll do it. Now, you asked me about beating the job boards because it's automated. So there's a lot of very simple tricks. Like, for example, most jobs in North America will say, don't call us. We'll call you. Yes. And most North Americans go, okay, I'll wait. Call them. Say, listen, my computer just crashed. My internet's been wonky all day. Can you just confirm that you received my application? Now, here's what happens. A typical job posting prior to COVID was getting between 350 and 5,000 applicants for one job posting. Now with COVID, where 60 to 65 million people lost their job, you can pretty much quadruple to quintuple that, right? That means you're getting 10, like you're getting basically uh, 1,500 to 10,000 people applying for one job posting. Wow. Right. So if you call and most companies, let's say, figure the first hundred that we get, we'll probably get a few good candidates. We'll interview that and hire from that. So if you're number 102, your resume is not being seen. So when you call the company and say, hey, can you check if my application went through? HR physically goes, pulls your resume, puts it at the top of the pile, goes, yep, it's here. Now you're talking to them. You're on the phone with them you have kind of two minutes to give your elevator pitch that says, here's the three or two things that I've achieved in my career that you should know about and why you should hire me because these are the results I can produce. Yes. Right? So now you've planted that seed. And furthermore, you can also basically say, well, when are you going to start interviewing for this role? So if they say we're going to start interviewing in two weeks, say, if I don't hear back from you in three weeks – is it okay for me to call you back to get some feedback on my resume because you're an expert? Everybody loves to be the expert. Now you've yeah. also planted that opportunity to create additional. In addition to it, and here's where how the databases are a little bit warped and nobody really understands how the databases work. If, let's say, you posted your resume, let's say, in September on Indeed, yes. and you just left it, you're probably on page 7,000 of Indeed. <laughs> right. Nobody sees your resume, right? right? So all of the big databases, Indeed, Glassdoor, CareerBuilder, refresh their resume database every night between 11.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and yeah. 2.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So before you go into bed, right, go into your resume, any on your resume, press the space bar, and save it. The moment that you make any minor modification on your resume, you're now a new resume. So that's when the great, resume that's great advice. That's great advice. Little, little little tip like that. So what you're saying is if you haven't touched your resume resume in a while, go back in and like Indeed or Glassdoor and just make a just space bar or something and resave it and it'll automatically queue you up to the top. Is that what you're saying? In fact, you should do it daily. Daily. Because, there you because go. that because that way. Like most, most, let's say recruiters and employers, when they need to hire a new position, yes. the first time they get the role, they'll probably spend maybe a half a day to a day actually looking at people on Indeed. After that, they basically don't have the time to go in and spend that much time. So they save the search and have an email to them daily. So if you've done that, you're already higher chances to, so, to be seen. So, so this is great. So let me just honor everybody who's on here. Hello, everyone. Hope, let us know if this is valuable. Omara says great points. She said, um, don't forget to research the HR manager's favorite perfume. <laughs> Again, anything that can help you stand out, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. The, the, the other thing, and this is, again, going back to the cardinal sins of a resume. Yes. Too many people focus on, like, you know, the action words, like manage, direct, liaise, coordinate. Here's the thing. The databases aren't programmed for those words. They're programmed for the technical words associated with the job that you're doing, right? So if you're an accountant, for example, the wow. database is looking for words like financial statements, general ledger, reconciliations, uh, you know, income statement, balance sheet, 
uh, wow. accounting, not manage direct liaison communicate uh, there because everybody writes those words. So the database is actually scoring how many times those technical words appear on your resume, right? So Austin, I know that you have a sales background. So, you know, account management, uh, business to business, business to customer, consumer, uh, you know. Well, can I ask you a question while you're yeah. on the topic real quick here? Is it, is it, is link, would LinkedIn be a good resource to grab some of those words? Because you know how they have, they have people, they make it easy for people to endorse other people. Are they yeah. good words to use? Uh, LinkedIn is a phenomenal resource and it's an, uh, I separate LinkedIn from the other databases because okay. you can do so much more on LinkedIn uh, okay. that you can't do on the databases. Like you can actually on LinkedIn, you can go to any company, see who's working there. And there's a function called in mail, which I think the cheapest version is about 35, $45 a month. And you yeah. get 10 emails, uh, 10 emails, sorry, that, um, are not part of your network that you can reach out to. And if they don't respond to you within, let's say, five days, LinkedIn gives you the credit back, and then you can reuse the credit. Oh, so okay. That's you can you can reach to reach two people in the like on LinkedIn, say hey, and there's strategies that I teach on how to actually use LinkedIn correctly and how to yeah. network correctly for the right messaging. Because most people, again, when they go networking, you're like, ooh, can I get your business card? Yes. I, I heard you speaking. You sound important. Can I have your business card? But that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't do anything. And I guarantee you, Austin, if you're going to a networking event and you and I have been to a few events together, if there's 100 people in the room and you just kind of gave out cards, you don't remember who people are. Right. I, but yeah, I mean, like, but yeah. this is where, like, for example, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm wearing a purple shirt. Purple is my favorite color. Yes. I brand myself with purple. My business card's purple. My logo's purple. Everything I do is purple. So that if I follow up with you, I say, hey, Austin, I'm the guy with the purple shirt that spoke to you yesterday. You're probably going to remember the purple shirt. You won't remember my name. But right. it's an emotional trigger that allows me to kind of get a better chance of getting a response. Also, the way that I speak in networking, I don't come and say, hey, Austin, you're an executive. Can you give me a job? I'm looking for a job. Because I haven't earned the right to, to kind of ask that of you. And most and too many people yeah. kind of jump right into that yes you need to speak so, a little bit about that i want to do this i want to do this because um sure. we, we uh we got a few minutes about five maybe 10 minutes here i okay. want to number one i want to talk about your course and number two yeah. i want to try to get i guess like a like a jedi trick from you if, uh, that we could share <laughs> absolutely there's so, lots uh, of little jedi tricks so i just gave us one with the with the shirt uh, that i love that so that's something to think about some way to differentiate yourself but uh, the course that you have, why don't you just talk about that? Because my, my, my goal, my intention is to bring something of value to my community, to people that watch my lives that might be in the space. Maybe you're not an entrepreneur. You're, you're looking for a better job. You're looking for your dream job. That's why Joseph is on with me today. But That's even if they're an entrepreneur, for example, and right now they're kind of in the early stage of being an entrepreneur and they need a good salary to help them finance being an entrepreneur, this is also a model for them because you don't have Great. to work the minimum wage. Uh, there's a lot of variety. So I've basically, I've invested over 25,000 hours to master pretty much everything there is to know about job. Can I stop for a second? I just want to stop you there because it, just important to note that uh, in, in Malcolm Gladwell's work, 10,000 hours puts you at genius level in anything. So you're a genius, Joseph. Thank you. So yeah, I've kind of taken Malcolm Gladwell's work and said, okay, I'm doubling and a half that. Yeah. And I've incorporated, like, you know, when I've done self-development for myself, like during the walk of fire with Tony Robbins, I kind of went, okay, there's some really great principles here. How come no one's teaching this for job finding? And so I've kind of taken that aware. It's like, the typical HR with everything that, and I've created a course that as long as you take action, you cannot fail because this course is giving you everything. So there is the psychology of the resume and 15 templates of resumes that you can use. There is the seven rules to an interview. There is the psychology of the interview so that you kind of know how to answer 98% of interview questions with this formula and it's guaranteed to work. I've helped 11,000 people. I've been hired by jobs I have zero qualifications for because I know how to interview better than other people. All right. It teaches yeah. you how to optimize your LinkedIn. It teaches you how to network correctly. 
it teaches you what to do when you network. So you ask for a golden nut week, like when you network, brand yourself. So you can wear a hat, a shirt, a tie, uh, a, uh, you know, a scarf, uh, a, a watch that is unique. Yeah. For women, there's a lot more variety because you can have a brooch, you can have a necklace, you can have earrings, you can have it. But brand yeah, right. yourself in a, to to kind of be noticed. Then the course has salary negotiations. It has kind of you know questions that you can ask the interviewer at the end of the interview so that you are the candidate that they remember the most. It has yeah. you know um, I've given let's say how to work with employment agencies. I've given a list of about 300 US employment agencies and 250 Canadian employment agencies. So you don't even need to do the research. It's already done for you. I've also listed for you all of the job boards in the US and Canada, the big ones that you can register because sometimes some companies will look and go, oh, you applied on Indeed. Everybody applies on Indeed. So we're not going to bother to interview you. But if you apply and let's say Glassdoor, they're like, okay, Glassdoor is a little bit smaller. We like the fact that you did a little research. We're going to interview you because you applied yeah. in Glassdoor. Um, great. And basically, it's it's kind of the A to Z to job find. There, everything you need to know is there. Yeah. All the tricks, all the systems, all the tools. What, um, what's the name of the course? Is it? Is it? Uh, it's called Dream Job Mastery. Okay. So I'm gonna. I'm just gonna put this in. It's called. Um, and and you have the link for that. Yeah, I'm sending you a Bitly link right now on the chat. It's a, it's, a, it's a course, and, and and what's the investment? It's ninety seven dollars. 97, is that like a one-time investment? It's a one-time fee. There's no upsell. There's no, hey, spend $5,000 with me. It's $97 to help everybody yeah. succeed. Yeah, from, and from what I know about you, just having met you and, and engaged with you, you are, you're just so content rich. Like you're giving so much in this course that it's A to Z, like you said. As you kind of gave me the honor of being called a genius with 25,000 hours of experience, yeah. I put... I've poured my heart and soul 25,000 hours to say, here's everything that no one ever taught you about job finding. Here's yes. why no one's calling you back. Here's why you screwed up the interview. Here's why your LinkedIn profile sucks. Here's why your resume sucks. Here's why you kind of there. So it's, yeah. it's, and it's like, it's a conversation of like me going, here's what happens. You say this, this is the reaction. You yeah. do this, this is the reaction. And it's literally a kind of like, Playbook almost. Almost like a for dummies model. Uh, okay. Version of I've done the homework for you. All you have to do yep. is just take a little bit of action. Let me ask you something. Is this uh, U.S. dollars? Is it 97 it's U.S. dollars? It's 97 so, U.S. dollars. So it's 97 U.S. dollars. Yeah. With uh, Dream Job Mastery from yeah. A to Z. And if you have the – okay, you sent me the link, so I'm going to grab yeah. it here. <clears throat> And I'm just going to invite everyone to check this out. And that's why, listen, that's why Joseph is on with me because, I mean, he's like the foremost authority in North America on landing, yeah. not only landing a job, but, but landing a dream job or a job that you're going to really love and enjoy. Or like you said, maybe it's I, I'm an entrepreneur and, I'm, and I, I need income right now. What, what's a good job for me, Joseph? What should I do? But uh, Or you just get the course to start. And I know... People can engage with you. From yeah, there. and then they can also find me on Facebook. I created a Facebook group. Oh, called that's Land right. Your, land so your dream we, job. Let's just talk about like that. just like the title says, land your dream job, and uh, it's basically that's the Facebook group. And uh, can you I'm, get that link for me? Because I want because you're going to be doing some things in there, right? Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to be hosting regularly, kind of uh, Zoom calls for people that are doing the program, for people that are curious about the program to kind okay. of listen in and um get ideas of what they're doing i'm going to be doing kind of coaching as opposed to a one-on-one -on -one. it's going to be a group coaching so okay. i'm going to take somebody from the audience and kind of go okay what's your question on this and then everybody gets to listen as i critique let's say a resume or as i kind of do a mock interview with them okay or, great uh look at their resume so it's land your dream job on facebook it's pretty straightforward oh, yeah i got it here so there, i just want to give people ways to connect because if you're if you're looking at this and you you're wanting help in this area, you want help to change your job, get your dream job, get a side hustle job while you're building your entrepreneurial dream. <clears throat> Joseph's a good a good great guy to connect with. He, he's the foremost authority. Twenty five thousand hours, eleven thousand people helped, six books written. So I hope you, you you see like the person that I'm putting in front of you, and you can get the course for ninety seven US or go to the Facebook page. 
Joseph's going to be launching some things on there that you can, you know, if you wanted to just check out and get some information first, you can do that. So there's opportunities here for you to get info that's going to help you and it's going to translate into tangible results. I've done a lot of interviews and, uh, you know, I, I've gone through and I've so I've experienced both sides of the table where I've interviewed people and I've been the interviewee and the interviewer. And, you know, and, and, but I, I know this much compared to what, what you know. And, and what you bring to the table. So I want yeah, everybody to connect with Joseph. Uh, and thank you, Austin. Again, I'm a very transparent person. If you go on my LinkedIn profile, for example, there is 70 testimonials there, both uh, written and video testimonials there. You know, uh, like if yes. anybody's like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this program, can I speak to people that actually went through your program? My answer is, yeah, you can. Right. In fact, like to give you a quick example, I have somebody in Israel right now that is a warehouse manager, logistics manager. I wrote his resume in LinkedIn profile. Basically, the moment I finished his LinkedIn profile, I did his LinkedIn profile at 630 in the morning. By 930, two different companies already called him and said, are you in Canada? Can, when can you start? Kind of thing. Wow. See, right. So, and he, he's not even in the country yet. He's not even in the country yet. So a job. And there's people in the country that can't get a job. <laughs> yeah. So now that's great. It's just a testament to what you're doing for people. When the, now that person actually engaged with you and, and you wrote the resume. And I know that's the services that you offer. But right yeah. now people can get into the Facebook group for, for free. Yeah. Is that a free entry into that? So the Facebook group is free. The okay. course is 97. Like I said, okay. in the course, great. let's say for resumes, not only do I teach you how to write the resume, but I've provided 15 different templates that I personally use um, with 15 different cover letters that you can use so that you're prepared. And it's like, all you have to do is just kind of change the words to your industry, follow the same format, just make it kind of with the, the results that I speak about that relate to your experiences, not necessarily the resume I wrote. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I've tried to make it so easy for people that, you know, Again, simple tricks like calling the company. No one's ever said that to anybody and said, go yeah. ahead and call, right? Like, No, that's a good tip. I, I, if you have a question, because we're going to wrap up here in the next few minutes. If you have a question and you want to type it in, type it in. You, I, I have his attention, like 25,000 hours in this space, uh, you know, studying this, pouring himself into it, learning it, getting results for people. If you have a question, Type in a question. If not, you can you can always engage. But while we have while we're wrapping up here, I told you I wanted to try to get one of the <clears throat> Joseph's Jedi tricks. Maybe we can get one of his top Jedi tricks for getting a job. Uh, we we'd love to get that. But while we're doing that, if you have a question, please type it in. A question that's not asked is a question that's not answered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Type it in. So wh while we're waiting for that, Joseph, is there is there a Jedi trick like something that you would you know, out of the box. In, in what? <laughs> listen, my, my, and I'm going to say this with kind of a quick little story again, if I, if I may. Yeah. Right. So there is a level where I can say uh, I have a friend that graduated mechanical engineering, uh, was looking for a job. Nobody responded to him because he was in that trap of you need five years of experience for an entry level job, but you just graduated, for example. So he decided to print about, I don't know, 20 copies of his resume. He picked okay. a few companies that he wants to work for. And he went in person to the organization and said, I'd like to speak to the director here. The reception looked at him and said, he's busy. He's like, okay, I'll wait. And he waited there from nine o'clock till two o'clock in the afternoon. At two o'clock, the director finally came out and goes, how can I help you? And the guy said, I know you're not hiring anybody, but here's my resume. I just graduated mechanical engineering. Here's kind of a couple projects that I've done, similar to what I've said here. Um, I wanted to introduce myself personally to you because uh, in case you decide to hire people. The director was so impressed that he stayed there for the whole day pretty much waiting for him that he hired him on the spot. There was no interview. It was like literally a five-minute conversation, yeah. and he got hired. We've lost that personal connection because everything's automated. Yes. So you know what? Take the time to go in person, even if you lose a whole day, right? Because – you know what? It might end up that because you waited the whole day, you're now different than everybody else. And that right there gets you hired on the spot. Now, you know, it is COVID right now. So are yeah. you still so again, just think about that because the company But again, so, so in that again, you like for example, so 
COVID times, minor alter, uh, modifications. So find an executive on LinkedIn to the company and then message them saying, hey, I'm writing an article or a blog about experts in your field. Great. Could I, could I have a few minutes of your time to interview you about your expertise? Beautiful. Now, that, that's gold right there. That, there you go. There's your Jedi trick right there. That's gold. Say that again. Right. So everyone gets that. So <laughs> reach out to an executive. Instead of saying, I'm looking for a job, say, hey, I'm writing a blog or an article. Uh, I would love to interview you as an expert in the field. And uh, would you have some time to share some of your exactly. wisdom? Love it. Right. And then when you get a hold of the person, you're like, okay, so for example, Austin, can you tell me what made you so successful in your life? Mm -hmm. What are your three biggest achievements in your career? You know, if you were to mentor somebody, what are some of the things that you would teach them to be able to succeed in this industry? Yeah. Now I've got your attention. I'm not asking for a job, but because you're talking about how great you are, when I ask you to critique my resume, again, I'm boasting how great you are. So you're going to give me the time of day to look at my resume. And when you fix my resume, you've just written the perfect resume that you want to hire. <laughs> There you go. Perfect. <clears throat> That's a great, great technique, whatever you want to call it. It's a great or just an organic way. And, and I, I would just say be sincere, you know, about, about getting that knowledge that, that you're asking for. And I it, that in and of itself will open up doors because a lot of things that a lot of times, <clears throat> even if somebody agreed to that and, and maybe they weren't hiring, they all a lot of these people they have colleagues and peers and all yeah. they have conversations about personnel and, and growing their company. And they, Hey, I met this guy. I think it'd be a good fit for your new program that I heard all that stuff. can And when that happens organically like that, you just, you, you just best job you can have. Absolutely. Absolutely. Joseph, I really appreciate this today. Is there anything that you'd want to just in closing, we got the links here for the Facebook. Yeah. Group. There's the course. It's $97 us to invest on everything from a to Z dream job, uh, what did you call it? Uh, dream job mastery, basically. Dream job mastery. So we're going to coin you as a dream job master. You got 25,000 hours at this. Uh, you're the real deal in this space. So I, I really appreciate this. Is there anything you want to share as we close? Again, I just want to tell people, Twenty. I know 2020 was really tough for a lot of people. And we just started 2021. We're still dealing with the COVID. But the reality is that there is a small percentage of companies that are shutting down. The rest of the company, especially for kind of, white collar jobs, blue collar jobs that are higher level are still hiring and they're finding new ways to kind of make, let's say COVID work for them. So there are jobs out there. There's plenty of jobs. Uh, and if you do that little bit to stand out, you'll get hired that quickly. Great. Joseph, thank you so much for sharing your expertise. There's thank you for having me on your show, Austin. It's been an honor. Yeah. And if you're, if you're just come, jumping into this late, I highly recommend you go back and look at the beginning because Joseph gave a lot of value in here, including the five cardinal sins of, of what not to do in a resume. So take a look at that. Go back, click on, join the Facebook group. If you're compelled, get the course, $97 A to Z on, on dream job mastery. Joseph, thank you so much for being with me today. And maybe we'll do this again at some point in the future, because this is going to be an ongoing thing with, with people looking for jobs. So maybe we can, Maybe we can do this again. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you, Austin, for giving me this opportunity uh, to help people figure out what it is that they want to do. And uh, I know you help uh, entrepreneurs be very, very successful. Uh, but sometimes when you're starting out, you have debts, you have difficulty. It's hard to kind of invest being an entrepreneur when you don't have the resources. And this is something that can offset. You have the resource and now you can use Austin as a great coach to help you become an entrepreneur that you want to be. Yeah. And guess what? If, if it's a job thing, I'm going to, I'm going to work with Joseph. I'm going to send, send you to Joseph. So you, you're covered here. Other way, entrepreneur job, we got you covered. So thanks everyone. Have a great Friday. Lift your head up. Great things are coming. Put one foot in front of the other. We'll talk to you soon. God bless. Thank everybody. you very much.